What's up, party people? I'm here, and I have a new video and a new blog post. I recently released this blog post uh, using geometry notes for motion graphics, and it basically goes over all the different kind of learnings and things that I've picked up past few months where I've just been experimenting with using Blender and geometry nodes to produce kind of like 3D and mostly 2D uh, motion graphics and seeing how Blender kind of fares as a replacement for something like Reeve or uh, After Effects, you know, like these other like kind of like main apps that people use for motion graphics and animation. But yeah, check out the article. It's up on my blog. I thought I would kind of do a walkthrough of just some basic concepts and some of the things that I touch on in the article. I have here in the article, I link uh, to like a GitHub where you can download uh, basically a source file. And you can see that I have just a bunch of different animation examples here. And you can come in and you can just see just different examples and just get an idea of just how nodes work together. Um, and basically a lot of the concepts that I was describing and screenshots you see in the article come from this uh, kind of source file. Uh, but we'll kind of start from scratch because why not? You know, I'm sure that's the best way to like understand things. So when we're talking about motion graphics in Blender, I'm talking about things like, you know, let, let's get basic, you know, because motion graphics could mean anything. Like motion graphics is like when you see me take the little Mega Man surfbot heads and like make them into like a grid and they all rotate or something, that's motion graphics. You know, like things that are 3D and animate, you know, in, in motion and they're graphic, they're motion graphics. Usually when people are talking about motion graphics, they're talking about 2D stuff. You know, you're thinking about stuff you'd see on Dribble or something where somebody's taking like, um, you know, like text and they're animating it and it's just text, you know, and it's just 2D text. It's not extruded. There's no like shading to make it look 3D, it's just text and it's just like animated and stuff. Um, so the, my, my approach was basically figuring out how to kind of do those kind of concepts in Blender. So when I'm talking about stuff like that, usually we're thinking about things like, um, you know, UI elements from the web. You know, usually those are the kind of things that you see replicated inside of um, these kind of like motion graphics. So say I have like a button from the web that I want to like animate or something. We could do this and we can make some text. We have a text like element that we have in Blender. I can just align the text kind of like centered. We have like alignment. You can see, I can like middle it out. That's kind of like a button that's like centered, right? And then I could even change the font if I wanted. I can make it like uppercase. I got some good control here. You can see here, some good stuff. Uh, but what if I wanted to make this corner rounded? You know, most of the buttons we see on the web are rounded. Uh, we'd have to go and we'd have to bevel this. So let me actually take these and bevel them. But let's actually use the bevel modifier so it's a little more non-destructive. Let's come over here. We'll pick bevel. We'll set it to vertices so that we're targeting the corners. And you can kind of already see what's happening here. We're taking the corners and we're creating more subdivisions so that we can basically kind of like have that rounded effect that we're looking for. And it could be really simple, like if you needed this like look where it's like a, a chunky edge, you can have it like that. Or you can add like maybe 16 subdivisions, 32, if you're really extra. Like, I don't know. You don't need that many, but. And you can see we have ourselves like a little rounded corner. That kind of looks like a button from the web, right? Cool. So you can kind of see like how, what, what primitives we're using inside of Blender to start create uh, some of these motion graphics that I'm talking about. And then to animate, you know, Blender has a whole keyframe uh, system here. So if I wanted to animate, I could just take these elements. Let's say like I take the text and we go over here to the location. I can, let's just animate. Insert a keyframe just so we know where we're starting. Let me slide over here. We'll move it like down. We'll move it up. This won't make any sense, but we're just animating. Yeah, we're animating, boom. 
it's animated normally when i do this i want these things like together so how would i do that i want to be able to like animate both of them and they're the same thing you know what i'm saying like i'd animate one thing and it acts on both of them how do i do that we have to use parenting so i created an empty object and now i have an empty object here that both of the objects are kind of like nested inside of and if i scale this object if i move it if i rotate it both of those kind of like operations are applied to all of the different things that i nested inside of it as children or whatever so weird every time we can do the same thing here i come over here i insert a keyframe we go we animate i just like animate it randomly boom boom and yeah now we have like a button that kind of animates say i wanted to kind of fade the button in and out you know um you can see like already we, we have the button and we have the components here but there's no colors going on so i actually have to come in here and I actually have to apply a material because this is a 3d object and apply a color and then now that's starting to look like a button cool but if i wanted like i said to animate the opacity i'd have to come into here bring in a timeline they don't do by default so you got to kind of like make your own timeline and insert a keyframe fade it out put in another keyframe and then you can see we have a button that fades in and out but we have that same problem that we were having before i animated one but i didn't animate the text and i have to go into that material and actually have to animate that myself so you can see Blender does motion graphics, but it does it the Blender way. <laughs> it's, it is the Blender way. Like if you're coming from Photoshop or you're coming from After Effects or just any app with some decent UX, you're going to feel not at home at all. <laughs> it's going to suck. Um, and you're going to have to like jump through various different hoops uh, just to be able to do very simple things that you took for granted. Um, so you're asking yourself, why do this in Blender? Why even do this? <sighs> I Why? That, make sure you ask yourself that same question before you start this process, because if you do have access to Reeve or After Effects or one of those softwares, I do highly recommend using those as an alternative to this. Hey, man, if you don't have any money and you need to just like use Blender because it's free, it's open source, maybe this is an option for you. And then I think you'll see that once you start to kind of like get into the flows and start to get things going, it is still laborious and tedious, some of the various aspects, but you can kind of like dial in some of those things and like automate them with like certain processes and it becomes less tedious, still tedious. That was how to do things manually, right? Um, let's take a look at how to do things in geometry nodes because you may ask yourself, why am I doing things in geometry nodes? Like if I'm already like bending over backwards to do an animation normally, why would I do that and also have to do arithmetic at the same time? And I will tell you it's because it makes things easier, <laughs> surprisingly. In the article, I basically go over these kind of like generic concepts where I showed you like you can make, you know, a plane and that becomes like the button background. You can use text that becomes the text, obviously. Um, if I needed a circle, I can just make like a circle. Um, Blender just has these kind of like primitives there. Uh, but when I'm in geometry nodes, things are a little different. Um, like if I wanted to basically make a plane, I would use a grid uh, component here. And I kind of get the same concept. And then if I wanted to add some text to that, I have string to curves. And then I'd also have to join the geometry. Let me actually bring this up a little bit. It's starting to become a little hard to work in this like zoomed view. But I hope it's helping you guys see everything. We have a test button. You can see here I have the same options that I was messing with in the previous like menu, but they're like now in the geometry nodes. And then because this is technically a curve, we need to fill the curve so that it becomes a mesh, so that it becomes something solid that we can see. Because if I don't do this, you can see it's just like outlines, but they're not outlines because they won't render to anything. They'll be invisible. <laughs> Blender. But yes, so 
with this, we've kind of created like the same kind of like concept that we had before. Let me kind of scale this text down by like a tenth of what it is. Cool. And let's scale the Y down. And that kind of looks like a button now, right? That's kind of what we were working with before. And then if I set the material and set the material to that, we can see that we have a button with geometry nodes. Not too bad. Took a little bit of work, you know, but it's nice though. Like you basically have this now and I can take something like this and I can say, hey, let's make a group. Let's call that UI button. Let's expose some of these values to the user. And now I have a button. And if I wanted to have multiple buttons, it's as simple as copy paste. And I can just take this, do that, and say button two. And that is the power of geometry nodes. Cue the light, cue the thunder. <laughs> this is why you want to use them. Um, obviously I could have this kind of set up with the layers and stuff and you can click through the layers and figure things out but isn't it so nice just to come in here and like just have properties that you can just like toggle and stuff and like boom bam you know and you just have everything that you need here and it's kind of like understandable um it depends on the type of person you are you know maybe you want to think in layers and you want to be able to see everything like layered out like that and it helps um but this is also really nice when you want to like do some dynamic stuff pause so uh youtube limits me like 15 minutes per video so i'm gonna have to cut this tutorial a little bit short uh but go over to the next one part two if you'd like to basically keep learning how to animate using geometry nodes um, and if you're liking this video please make sure that you subscribe down below like and um, do all that cool stuff because it really helps right now like right now is the most critical time as you can see i can't even post a uh, long form video yet so <laughs> any support would be nice um, and if you have any questions let me know in the comments uh, always down to answer like anything that i can but yeah thank you all for watching and part two take care stay curious <laughs>